guys and welcome to my video. Today I'll be going over a lot of quick topics all at once, but uh, first I'd like to just address Primo Chill View um, and what it looks like in a loop and just my general impressions of it. So this is the sky white variant right here. And I'll try to get a good shot of the reservoir. You can see that um, this hex res uh, looks really nice with the view. Um, and I've tried to have a really clean loop. So only 90 degree angles. And this has turned out really well. Um, so some of the different technologies I'm using are uh, DDC pumps. So as you see, I've used a bracket there, the deluxe bracket, and actually mounted the pump straight into the res. So I've never done that before. Um, I've heard that DDC pumps are not as good as D5, but I'm actually really pleased with the way this turned out here. So, uh, shocker, this loop is actually a dual loop. So, <clears throat> The cool thing about this review is that you'll get to see two different uh, colors of fluid. So this is the candy purple SX, I think. And uh, that's what it looks like when it's swirling. So uh, I'm using Singularity Computers 16 millimeter acrylic tubing. And that is a TI. Um, and one thing I've noticed is that you can see that the fluid here is swirling really nicely. The fluid up here is solid. So what I'm going to show real quick is on my monitor here, I have pulled up uh, the DC control here. So this is an MSI BIOS, but you'll see I have my pump here. Um, and so I'm going to show you real quick. Um, there's a curve I've adjusted right now. It's running at 1600 RPM. So I'm going to set it to DC and just show you what happens. So the pump gets a lot noisier because it's running at... Um, Honestly, I don't know. I think it's like four volts or whatever. But when you turn up your pump, the fluid stops becoming visible in the loop. But what has happened is that the pump is swirling really hard now, and the whole thing is starting to come to life, I guess. So eventually that swirl will kind of reach its way up to the top. Um, so yeah, that's, that's uh, that. So what you get when you run your pump at higher RPMs is that you lose the um, streakiness effect in the tubing, but your res starts to swirl up a lot more. So you can see that's a lot of swirl there. Um, so that's the fluid, and that's what it looks like in a running loop. So how much does this fluid cost? Well, uh, it depends. If you buy it on Prima Chill, it's $30, and it comes with something called Primo Prep. So part of my woes with building this system is that I introduced a used CPU, uh, GPU water block in here. So I'll show you this so you can kind of see what's on there. I introduced the block after I'd already run the prepper and what had happened was I think there's a nasty chemical reaction and it caused the whole thing to just break down and it was really gross. Um, I wish I would have saved some fluid for you to look at. But uh, it was absolutely disgusting. It had gunked up all the fittings, and I had to scrub everything down and disassemble the whole thing. So now that it's running this new bottle, it, it looks good so far. But uh, keep that in mind, is that while the fluid is really just uh, stunning, it does have a lot of maintenance. So here's the fluid in a bottle, and I've removed the packaging. 
just so you can kind of see. So that's the effect you're going to get. Here's the purple. And the purple, it, it really just pops. Um, I like the purple a better color wise, but the white seems to actually show up better in the loop itself, which is kind of uh, weird. And again, loops like this that have a large reservoir, um, I think that's 250 mil, uh, don't seem to work really well. Um, if you had mounted this horizontally, I think that it would have worked better, but no, it, it, does, it doesn't spin and swirl at the top like I wanted it to. So the last thing I wanted to show you, again, like I said, there's a lot of new technologies that I used. This is a Primo Chill rigid finishing bit. And what happened was I accidentally got the, uh, I forget what it's called, but the millimeter um, that is below 5 eighths or 16 mil. So um, if you do buy this, on Amazon just make sure that you are getting the uh, correct sized bit but I did use it on some uh, smaller tubing and it actually worked really really well so that's Prima Chill Rigid finishing bit and I think it's retails for around 30 this is a monsoon uh, hardline uh, bender kit and I also have a heat gun but it's in the garage so basically, uh, you mark up your tubing with the rulers and everything is very precise. Um, what I've done is I've actually screwed down these um, metal placeholder things. And so you screw them to a piece of wood and you put the tubing up against it and it makes a perfect bend. So I uh, was happy with this, but it was kind of expensive. So I, I honestly don't know. Uh, I think only the um, the 45 millimeter and 90 are the actually only things useful really here. Um, this was hard to use, and again, I'd recommend rigid finishing bit if you were going to want to deburr, because this right here does both. This is kind of clunky, and it doesn't really. I, I felt like I was damaging the tube more than I was helping it. So to cut these tubes, I actually used a compound miter saw. Um, every single pack saw that I've ever used was a piece of crap. Uh, the blades weren't sharp enough, and I could not get it on a stable enough surface. Even with a miter box, I, I just couldn't do it. Um, I was slipping and scratching up my tubing, and it was just terrible. So I used a compound miter saw for wood, and it actually worked really well. The only thing that did not work well was tubing that had been cut at odd angles. And so if I were to try to use my saw to like saw that off, the whole uh, thing would shatter. So um, that's just set there for an example to you if you ever decided to do that. Moving on. What I have done is I've assembled ma uh, baby bear, mama bear, and papa bear. And what we have here is possible competitors to Prima Chill. Uh, other fluids that you might see that are very common. So I'm going to throw a little bit of this in the water. And there you have it. Uh, that's what cryofuel looks like. Um, it's very, how do I put this, uh, basic. So I would say that this fluid right here is kind of just average. Like there's nothing really amazing about it. It just turns the water blue. So let's try next. So this right here is Mayhem's Pastel. I've actually never used it. I was planning on using it for a build and just never got around to it. So let's see how uh, this one looks. And sorry, I only have one hand. So 
apologize about the shakiness. And what I've done really is I probably didn't pour enough in there. So it still looks pretty watery. Um, probably what I'll do is dump some water out and retry again. So let's do that right now. Ugh. We are going to retry with a smaller amount of water. So see, got a lot less. This is lime yellow. And my plan originally was to do like PUBG type build, but you know, that never really came about. Okay, there we go. That looks much better. So I'm gonna do this quick shake. And the fluid just looks solid. Kinda looks like a banana juice. <laughs> All right, so our last one of the day will be uh, Mayhem's UV Blue Concentrate. So let's add it and we'll see. Ooh, I actually really like that. So, there you have it. It almost has a teal look, whereas Cryofuel definitely has a dark, dark blue look. Um, what else can I really say here? Um, I guess I could say that um, this project probably took me 60 hours or more to do everything. And I'm still not satisfied even with the end product. Um, there are a lot of things that I wish I could change, some things that I really, was really happy about. I'd say that this case right here, um, Corsair 900D I think, uh, was not a pleasure to work in, despite the many reviews that said that it would be. Uh, this thing would not stay shut, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to file or dremel off it. Um, the side panel would not go on easily, which just aggravated me. Uh, this guy right here, in order to mount the res, uh, there's a top part that I had to take off. And I swear it would not come off. So after looking at uh, videos and stuff for like 30 minutes straight, uh, I finally just had to brute force yank it off and apparently that's what everyone had to do. So lots of design flaws. Um, this is the Singularity Computer's uh, core mount, and you'll see that it's like not quite enough to center this reservoir. So that was another mistake I made. I should have used two singles, and I just did the core. Uh, not pleased with that. I'd say that the thing that I was really pleased with, to finally end the video, was the tubing. This is 16 millimeter singularity computers tubing and you can see it is just so clear um, now let me show you this this is EK's tubing and it's hard to really tell the difference between the two honestly but if you were to hold them up the one on the left actually looks kind of smoky Singularity one looks clear. So that's the difference that I found uh, between the two. Um, you know, that's about all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video and all the different things that uh, I kind of introduced to you along the way. Um, overall, I'd say that I'm, I, I'm happy with this and I'm glad I did it. But um, you know, there's a lot of woes along the way like the fluid completely breaking down and having to replace it. That was just not fun at all.